Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me be clear here. In the fight for the title at 168 pounds, between Avni Yildirim, Mr. Robot, the guy who used to be a big prospect in the sport, and Canelo. I expect Canelo, as I'll explain, to win by KO. But that's not how I'm betting the fight. Because the casino is giving me 14 to 1 on Avni Yildura. 14 to 1 on a former star prospect. So the way I'm playing it is, you'll Durham, to win the fight, you always want a taste of 14 to 1. You'll Durham to win the fight, hedged with Canelo by KO. But I need for you to understand the risk involved. Canelo's last fight against Callum Smith went the distance, didn't it? Right, went the distance. This fight's at 168 Pounds. I know Canelo stopped Rocky Fielding earlier, but if this fight goes the distance like Canelo's last fight, you lose it all, right? Understand the risk involved. Now, I believe that this fight will be an inside boxing extravaganza. Think Roberto Duran. Think Andre Ward, right, against Mikel Kessler, for example. Yul Durham's 5'11". Canelo is 5'8". Right, let's be real here. Let's go by real heights. Right, Canelo's a little bit shorter than Yul Durham. Canelo hits harder. Canelo can fight low. That's very important here. And Canelo has a great body attack and a great uppercut with the ability to throw straight punches, right? That's very important. Now, Mr. Robot, like Andy Ruiz, the heavyweight, has no back foot, right? These men would be king if they just had a few other wrinkles. Yildurim has no back foot. He's very front foot heavy. He comes in with an earmuffs defensive style that protects his sides, protects the sides of his head. If you're a hooker, his arms and his gloves are going to catch a lot of your shots. Right? The mistake that most opponents make against Mr. Robot is that they try to move away from him. Right? They don't understand that the way to beat him is by getting low and staying in the pocket. They move away from him. His defense is tight. They throw hooks. He catches the shots. He throws hooks. He's relentless. He wears you down. He beats you up. But in my opinion, he has a hole in his defense. Let's do the visual again. This is Avni Yildirim, right? It's tight. He leans. So his elbows are by his sides, right? It's hard to hit him with a kidney shot. It's hard to hit him with hooks to the body. It's hard to hit him with hooks to the head, right? He's claiming, at least his trainer is, that he's going to come in and he's going to fight this Golovkin style. Let's not kid ourselves here. Let's be critical here. Yildirim's defense is better than Golovkin's defense right now. Right? Let's be clear. But the problem, and we saw this in the Chris Eubank masterpiece. That is a masterpiece fight. The problem is Yildirim has a hole in his defense. 
while he has his sides protected and while he leans. He's fighting a shorter fighter who can fight even shorter than him, right? Lower than him. Yildurim's stomach area right above his belt, in other words, right around his belly button, is open to get hit with straight shots, right? If you're hooking, you probably hit his arms. But if you time it and you're low already and you know how to hide your head and you're heavy handed because that's who Canelo is and you can throw straight shots, you can hit Yildura to the lower part of his body. Understand, with regard to his hands, Yildurim is mechanical. Again, earmuffs. He's not Archie Moore or George Foreman, guys who turn their hands sideways. Evanda Holifield at times would turn his hands sideways to have an arm bar against an uppercut. Yildurim is just not that adaptive, reactive. What you see in the first round is what you're going to see in the fourth round. Even when a guy like Chris Eubank is getting low and is throwing right uppercuts in their fight. In my favorites folder here, I actually have the highlights from the Chris Eubank fight. You're going to notice Eubank figures out early that he can throw uppercuts right between the guard on Yildura, right? He, in fact, gets a knockdown off an uppercut on Yildura. Hits Yildura right on the chin, right? Yildura tries to play it off. At that point, he's an unbeaten fighter, right? So he is a little bit surprised that the ref calls it a knockdown, even though his knee apparently hits the canvas. So then they continue, and Eubank, who is willing to have his back up against the ropes, to lure you in so he can hit you as you're trying to unload on him. Eubank then drops his shoulder and starts throwing uppercuts and they're landing. Yildurim makes no adjustment. You'll notice Yildurim can't even take the extra step forward to grab Eubank. That's not his game. He's accustomed to being alpha. He's accustomed to doling out punishment. He doesn't have great defensive skills inside. His defense is blocking your hooks. So I believe Canelo is going to target Yildurim's lower body. And Canelo is such a wicked body puncher. Wicked. And I believe Canelo is going to use lateral movement. In other words, you can hit a guy with a hook to his belly button if you just shift to the side quickly on your way in and then throw your hook when the guy's over here, right? That hook will then land straight. Canelo is also a murderous uppercut puncher, right? Like Anthony Joshua, Canelo can knock you out on an uppercut. I think Canelo is going to come in. He's going to target Yildurim's body. Canelo is very well studied. He and his corner come in with the game plan. I believe they know the entry point on beating Yildurim is right around Yildurim's belly button. It's right above Yildurim's trunks. I imagine Yildurim is going to try to come in with high trunks to try to stop that punch from landing. Understand too, when you have your hands at your side, you need to have a lot of wiggle in your body. You need to be like Mike Tyson. That upper body needs to be on a swivel because if you're stationary, guys can then target your body, right? Yildurim, who sometimes fights taller guys, is the taller man here. The person with the better upper body movement is Canelo. The person with the straighter punches, the harder punches, is Canelo. The guy who makes adjustments in the middle of the fight, like he did the first Golovkin fight, 
is Canelo. I think Canelo shows his greatness, takes out Yildurum from the inside out. In other words, Canelo's not going to be on his back foot. Canelo's going to be low in the pocket. Even if Canelo backs up, it'll be to set up like Eubanks did, backing up. It'll be to set up a pocket where he can get low, get Yildurum throwing punches, and then counter him to the body and then come upstairs with uppercuts. Right? Yildurum doesn't have a great jab. The problem with having no back foot and no real jab means that you lose control over the spacing. Right? Your opponent knows, okay, he's going to enter the pocket sooner or later because he's not going to beat me outside behind a jab. Right? That's the big problem Yildurum has here. So I'm expecting Canelo to win by stoppage. But I believe the margin in professional boxing isn't as great as the odds makers seem to think. Upsets happen. In fact, they happen all the time. Right? J-Rock Williams last year, for example, got beat by an opponent, right? Every year you have a slew of upsets. Yildurim does what he does extremely well. It is very hard to hit him with hooks. He is relentless. If you don't hurt him, he's going to keep coming for 12 rounds. I don't know how a fighter like this goes off at 14 to 1 odds. That doesn't make any sense to me. Understand, 9 to 1 odds would give him a 10% chance of winning the fight. Here they're saying he has less than a 10% chance of winning the fight. Right? I'm going to take the low-hanging fruit here. I see 14 to 1 and I'm thinking, what? I bet $5 and I win $90 back? All right, I'll be the casino's huckleberry. I like Yildurim to win. I'm expecting Canelo to win the fight by stoppage. That's the hedge I'm going to set up. To try to break even if Canelo gets the KO, I'm really swinging for the fences here with Yildurim. Right? Understand, I feel that Yildurim has better stamina than Canelo. Right? I know Yildurim is going to be active in the fight. If he could figure out a way to avoid Canelo's low body shots, right? He has to bob and weave. He has to keep his midsection moving, right? If Canelo throws a punch that strays low, he needs to bring it to the ref's attention so that Canelo has to raise his punches, avoid the hole, in Yildurim's defense. If he does that, he has an outside shot certainly better than a 1 in 14 shot. So to sum up, I expect Canelo to win by stoppage. Right? By stoppage. I know Yildurim's hard to stop. Right? The uh, fight against Anthony Durrell is really a cut fight. That's not a real stoppage. Right? That's a cut fight. The only time Yildurim gets stopped is against Eubank. But Canelo is such a gifted puncher. And because this guy has a hole in his defense and because Canelo can fight low and has a murderous uppercut and murderous body shots, I'm expecting Canelo to win by KO. But I'm also going to be on the 14 to 1 side with Avni Yildurum. Canelo by KO hedged with Yildurum simply to win. That's how I see the fight. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.